Hey guys, Perry from Into Fly Fishing, and welcome to today's tutorial on um, how to tie a caddis fly nymph imitation. For the materials that we're going to use, the hook is a scud or a nymph larva hook. This is a Moosh 8464 in a size 10. You can make use of any sort of curved shank nymph hook. Uh, if you refer back to the article we wrote on the specific fly, there's a list of hooks that you can look at using as well. For the weights, I uh, will be using 0.05 inch lead wire. You can also be, uh, make use of a tungsten bead. That would obviously take up some of the space of the thorax. So popular colors would be black, brown, copper, even gold. And if you want to add something flashy to your fly, you can also add a um, fluorescent orange tungsten bead. That would work as well. Today we're just going to be making use of the lead wire. That will probably be used mostly under the thorax, depending on the amount of weight you would want to add. Um, but we use the lead wire not only to add weight, but to add a little bit of bulk and beef up the thorax. For the thread, I'm going to be making use of my trusty Semper Fly um, 8-0 tan thread. For the ribbing material, UTC, copper brown ribbing material. For the scud back, a brown stretchy translucent material like this. This is one quarter inch. I found that when I have one quarter inch, I can cut it to any size that I want. It's a little bit too thick and wide or not thick but wide for, for a fly this size so I'll probably cut it down to between an eighth inch and, and, and slightly bigger. For the abdomen I'm going to be making use of Hemingway's Hairs Dubbing Plus UV. So in a dispenser like this you have all these dubbings but they come in different colors so firstly the thing that I like about this dubbing is that it's synthetic um, so it works easy. They also incorporated some hair fibers, so that it has this natural buggy looking profile. Uh, they also incorporated some UV fibers, so you won't be able to see it now, but in real life it has this sort of purple pinkish flash to it, that UV shimmer. And that also helps create a more lifelike appearance to the nymph. So for the abdomen, I'm going to be using this tan, light tan color. I'm going to be making use for, uh, of the same material for the thorax. I'm going to use the brown, dark brown. But with that, I'm going to dub in some seal skin. I'll show you how to mix that up and dub it. For the dubbing wax, I'm going to be using Loon's Low Tech Swax. Any dubbing wax will be fine. And just to seal the deal off, uh, water-based head cement from Loons as well. Your favorite head cement will be fine. So that's all the material you'll need. Um, you can vary the colors as well, depending on the caddis fly species on your local waters. Um, I tie them in chartreuse and black, in sort of an olive and brown. This tan and brown is a favorite color of mine as well. So you can really vary the, the, the dubbing and the scud back and the um, ribbing materials but this is a general guide to, to show you how to tie to tie these flies. For the tools obviously you'll need a vise, it doesn't need to be a rotary vise, you won't be turning the fly around too much. Uh, for the thread you'll be using a bobbin holder, normal short blade tying scissor, piece of velcro or a little velcro brush this is a brush by Stonfo. This will just be used to comb out the thorax so you make it more buggy and just a whip finishing tool. So that's all the tools and material you'll need to tie the caddis nymph imitation. So let's get cracking on tying the fly. Great, to get started, we're going to place a hook into the vise. Make sure that the hook is nice and secure and that the hook point and the place of the bob is out of the vise's jaws and you also have access right here to the back of the hook because 
you'll be tying the abdomen of the fly all the way to the back of the hook. Before applying the thread, break off a section of lead wire and hold it, pinch it between your thumb and index finger on the left hand and just make a couple of touching wraps. Anywhere along the hook shank is fine. Like that. Break off the excess and cut off the back. Now just compress it. That's about the length you want on a fly this size. And position it, leaving a small gap between the lead wire and the eye of the hook. That's where the head of the fly will be made. Now to apply the to lock the thread in place. That's it. Lock the thread in place behind the lead wire. It's locked in place, cut off the excess, wrap forward to just behind the lead wire, then pinch the lead wire in place so it stays there, position your thread in front of the lead wire and make a couple of wraps there. So now you made wraps on this side of the lead wire and in the front. Now run your thread over the lead wire section back and forward to create a thread foundation on the lead wire and to secure it in place. There are little sharp edges, just bend that over with your thread and create a smooth transition from the lead wire to the shank of the hook. A nice taper and then wrap the thread with touching turns around the shank of the hook to create a thread base. Leave your thread right there. So my reference point is on a scud hook like this. If my thread hangs freely, if I let the bobbin hang freely, the thread is placed in the correct position when it hangs and the, a straight line between the bobbin and the thread intersects or lies just on the inside of the hook bend, like that one or two wraps there, then I run my thread forward, I break off a section of copper wire or your ribbing wire, I place it right next to the shank and I secure it in place with thread and then I run my thread all the way back while keeping the wire on the side of the hook shank. Stop where you ended the um, thread base. Now cut off a section of your scud bag material An inch is about enough um, as you need enough material to work with not just enough material for the fly itself you need to pull it to this side and that side and make sure that you give yourself enough material to work with there you have it now place it on top of the hook shank, like so, and secure it in place with a couple of wraps. Make sure that you secure it right on top of the hook shank as this will form the back of the nymph, hence the name scud back material. section there that I just need to kind of flatten. So that's secured right on top of the hook shank as this will be pulled over the fly further down the line. Move your thread all the way to the back again and apply some thread wax, dubbing wax to your thread. Don't need that much. Now, some of your dubbing, just take out a couple of thefts like that. You can always add some more later. Create a nice, slender, thin dubbing noodle.
make a couple of wraps around the shank and then after every couple of turns just wrap turn the dubbing again obviously you need a little bit more So the length of the abdomen needs to be about approximately two-thirds the total length of the body. So the total length of the body would include the abdomen and the thorax obviously. So that would be about to there. Right. Now the next step is to pull over the scud back material while holding it in place like two wraps and then pull the scud back material a little bit tighter and then do two more securing wraps. Now wrap the, um, the ribbing in the opposite direction than you did the thread, so the thread turned around in that direction. So we want the ribbing done in that direction. You'll see that as you apply the ribbing it bites into the scud back material. That's exactly what you want. Creates a nice lifelike appearance to the fly. So once you reach the thread, tie off the ribbing and cut off the excess. Now pull back the scud back material and wrap over that tie and point so that you don't see any thread exposed. Right, like that. Now we're going to apply the um, dubbing for the thorax. To do that, as I mentioned earlier, we'll um, mix seals fur with normal dubbing. So the seals fur has these longer guard hairs on the top and it has these tan sort of fluff at the bottom. So what we want is to separate the two. So we're going to cut off a section. Don't need that much, it's not a massive fly. And pinch the guard hairs on top and remove some of the theft at the bottom. Like so. Now you're left with that. Now take some dubbing it and place the two onto each other and just mix it between your thumbs and index fingers so you create something that looks buggy and like that just place that aside for now and apply some dubbing wax it's very important to apply dubbing wax here as the, those long um, seals, seal hair fibers tend to just fly off the thread if you start dubbing them. So once you've done that, take a little bit of that dubbing you made and apply that to the thread. You'll see it sticks immediately if you have, if you're using a dubbing wax. Form a nice dubbing noodle and dub the thorax. You can add a little bit more. Pull back any fibers when you get to the front, like that. Make one or two wraps. Now, before we pull over the scan back material, we're gonna take a little Velcro strip and comb out some of these fibers, especially at the bottom. These will mimic the legs of the nymph. Pull back the material, make one or two wraps, like that. Now bring over your scud back material, keeping it tight, just make two 
wraps pull back scout back material so pull back any fibers and that pull the scout back material over again let's just turn the hook and the shank a little bit to straighten the eye out now just secure the scout back material again two wraps pull it back and create a head on the fly now I'll just do two whip finishes like that cut off the thread and apply a thin layer of head cement just to add durability to the fly like that and to finish the fly off pull the scout back material up slide your scissors all the way down and make a cut like that obviously you'll see that the legs now are a little bit too long so what you can do is just bring them out a little bit just cut them like that and that's how to tie a basic caddis nymph imitation but um, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and uh, yeah post any comments down below comments or questions I'll be happy to answer them until we see each other again just from into fly fishing.